for choosing to spend your Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day with us here at the Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation. And we have a wonderful program this afternoon for you. We're going to start with some of the most famous speeches, the most famous words of freedom from Dr. King. And these will be recited by actor Tony Lucas. Uh, Tony is a staple of the Henry Ford. If you come into the village um, any season, you can see Tony performing as Elijah McCoy. You can see him at holiday nights, uh, with, with the night before Christmas, and uh, with selections from Edgar Allan Poe for Halloween. So I am uh, very honored to be able to introduce Tony as he begins Words of Freedom. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. And welcome to our presentation of Words of Freedom. The dream. What a joyous, joyous day it is today to celebrate the birthday of such a great man, the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. Yes. We honor his life and his legacy. Martin Luther King Jr. was born on January 15, 1929, in Atlanta, Georgia. He was ordained a minister at the young age of 19. And he always said that being a man of God was true call. And just a few short years later, at the age of 26, he became the leader of the Civil Rights Movement in Montgomery, Alabama in 1955. Montgomery being the birthplace of the Civil Rights Movement. In this first speech, Martin Luther King Jr. remembers what it was like in the early days of the Civil Rights Movement. One day, after finishing school, I was called to a little church in Montgomery, Alabama. And I started preaching and and things were going well. It was a marvelous experience. And then, one day, a few years later, a lady by the name of Rosa Parks decided she wasn't going to take it any longer. And she stayed in her bus. You may not remember it now, it was several years ago, way back now, but it was the beginning of a movement where 50,000 black men and women refused absolutely to ride the city buses. And we walked together for 381 days. one of the most amazing things I had ever seen in my life. And things were going well, but then, after a time, the white folks of Montgomery knew that we meant business. And they started doing some nasty things. And they started making nasty a telephone call. And it came to a point that some days more than 40 telephone calls came in threatening my life and the life of my family and the life of my church. And I took it for a while in a strong manner. But I never will forget one night it was very late. It was around midnight. And you can have some strange experiences at me. And I came home one night and immediately the telephone started ringing. 
Mama Yoga Yin was an ugly voice. The voice said to me in substance, we're tired of your mess now. And if you want out of town in three days, we're gonna blow up your house and blow your brains out. And I had heard these things before, but for some reason that night it got to me. And I went down to the kitchen to get a cup of coffee, thinking that coffee would give me a little relief. And as I sat there, pulled back on the theology and the philosophy that I had just studied in the university, but the answer didn't quite come now. I'm trying to come up for the reason for the existence of sin and evil in the world. And as I sat there, I thought about a few great little daughter that had just been born about a month earlier. We have four children now, but we only had one then. And she was the darling of my life. And I thought about how she could be taken away from me, or how I could be taken away from her. And I thought about a beautiful, dedicated, and devoted wife who was over asleep, just a few feet away. And I, I thought about how she could be taken away from me. And I got to a point that I couldn't take it any longer. I was weak. But something said to me, you can't call on daddy now. He's over in Atlanta, 175 miles away. You can't even call on mama now. You got to call on that something that your daddy used to tell you about. That power that can make a way out of no way. And it seemed that at that moment religion had become real to me and I had to know God for myself. And I bowed down over that cup of coffee and I prayed a prayer and I prayed out loud. I said, Lord, I'm I'm down here trying to do what's right. I, I think I'm right. I, and I think the cause that we're fighting, fighting for it is right. I, but I must confess that I'm weak now and I'm faltering and I'm losing my courage. I, and it seemed that at that moment I could hear it in a voice telling me, Martin Luther, stand up for justice. Stand up for truth. Stand up for righteousness, and lo, I will be with you even till the end of the world. Oh, and I tell you, I seen the lightning, and I heard the thunder roar, and I seen the sin breakers gasping, trying to conquer my soul. I heard the voice of Jesus saying, Fight on! Fight on! I don't mind telling you that sometimes I feel discouraged. Living every day under extensive criticism, I, I feel discouraged. Living every day under the threat of death, I feel discouraged sometimes. But then the whole spirit replies. Oh, you can't. Do you hear? Sin, sin, 
for demonstrations, boycotts, sittings. They were the freedom riders. And at the height of the civil rights movement, on August 28, 1963, Dr. King was the keynote speaker for the famous March on Washington. It is there at the Lincoln Memorial he delivered one of his most famous and most quoted speeches. I have a dream. And I am honored to join you here today in what will go down in history as one of the greatest demonstrations for freedom in the history of our country. Four score years ago, a great American in whom symbolic shadow we all stand signed the Emancipation Proclamation. But 100 years later, the Negro was still not free. And I am now mindful that some of you have come here fresh from narrow jail cells. Some of you have come here from places where your quest for freedom has left you battered by the storms of persecution and staggered by the winds of police brutality. You have been the veterans of others Continue on with the knowledge that unearned suffering is redemptive. Go back to Mississippi. Go back to Alabama. Go back to the slums and the ghettos of the northern cities, knowing that this situation can and will be changed. Let us not follow in the valley of despair. And even though we must face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. And I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these that all men are created equal. I have a dream. I have a dream that one day my four little children will live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream. I have a dream that one day every mountain and every hill shall be made low and the crooked places shall be made straight and the glory of God shall be revealed for all flesh to see it together. This is our hope. This is the faith that we will take back to the south. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of a mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that one day, one day, hallelujah, one day, we all with this dream. That will be the day when all of God's children will be able to sing with new meaning. My country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrims cried from every mountainside. Let freedom 
and for miracles to be a great nation, this must become true. So let freedom ring. Let freedom ring from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the heightened Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped mountains of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the capacious peaks of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain, Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mohill of Mississippi. We let it ring. And we let freedom ring from every village and every street. From every city and every state. We will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands together and sing in the words of the old Negro spirit. Free at last, free at last. We are free. Struggle continued. People fought. People demonstrated. People went to jail and died. And the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. kept on. Kept on in hopes of making the dream a reality. In April of 1968, Dr. King was in Memphis, Tennessee, on behalf of the striking sanitation workers. Many of those closest to him advised him not to go. They said it was too dangerous. Dr. King said, if I don't go to Memphis, then what will happen to them? That's the question, not what will happen to me. On April the 2nd, Dr. King would deliver his final speech. I see the I am delighted to see each of you here tonight. And there's something happening here tonight. And there's something happening in our world. And the world is all The nation trouble is in the land, confusion all around. But I know somehow that only when it is dark. I see God working in this period of the 20th century in a way that men in some strange way are responding. Something is happening here today. The masses of people are rising up. And wherever they are assembled, whether they are in Johannesburg, South Africa, 
Nairobi, Kenya, New York City, Atlanta, Georgia, Jackson, Mississippi, or Memphis, Tennessee. The Quran is always the same. We want to be free. That's all this whole thing is about. We aren't engaged in any negative arguments with anybody and in any negative protests. We are determined to be people. We are determined to be men. We are saying that we are God's children and we shouldn't have to live the way that we are forced. We aren't going to let it make stop us. We aren't going to let it in dog stop us. We aren't going to let it in fire hoses stop us. We go before the dog singing. They ain't going to let nobody turn me around. We go before the fire hoses singing. This little and we go to the jailhouse singing, we shall overcome. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now. Because I've been to the mountain top, and I don't mind like anybody. I would like to live a long life, longevity. But I'm not concerned about that now. Just want to do God's will. But he's allowed me to go upon the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. And I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing of any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Lucas.